Hey, welcome to the program. This is Our Healthy Homes, ourhealthyhomes.com. That's the website that you're going to want to go to, ourhealthyhomes.com. All right, so we have uh, Frank Mendez. Am I saying that right? Yes, sure. Uh, he usually uh, gets all that. Uh, <laughs> uh, with waterdistillers.com, we're going to have a – water is so important. I've been asking Sheila for two months to get a water guy on the show because I just – I wanted to have this conversation about water. Uh, so we got 55 seconds here, Frank. Just – just say hi so you're used to talking in the microphone and then give us your quick contact information. For sure. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Keith welcome. and Sheila, for uh, asking me to be here. Uh, yes, my name is Frank Mendez. Uh, our website is www.waterdistiller.com. And uh, our phone number is 612-701-7820. We're best known for water distillation, but uh, I'm considered a water expert uh, nationally and internationally in respect to other water uh, entities as well. So I'd like to invite you after we speak here. Hopefully I've, uh, I've stimulated you enough to ask more questions, mm -hmm. to challenge what I have to say, to let me know what, what differences you have in reference to what I'm saying and I'm thinking. And I really welcome that because I'm sure we'll, we'll uh, get to We're going to stir it up. Yep. Frank? We are going to talk about water. water. Yes. I'm so excited about water. <laughs> so am I. You know, first of all, you know, everybody needs it. That's one of those things that we all need is water. The first question I have is, what is the difference between tap water, distilled water, and filtered water? You know, with like the, the filters that you screw onto the end of the faucet and or the ones that sit on the counter that you have in the refrigerator charcoal filter. Well, I'll start with tap water. Okay. Uh, tap water is basically uh, treated water. Right. Uh, in reference to that, it's not raw water, but treated. Okay. And it comes uh, with a, a, pr a primary focus of eliminating uh, bacteria, cryptosporidium, the type of things that would uh, give you diarrhea. Okay. And that you dehydrate. So that's the tap water that, that we have. That's and they it. do that because it's in the public system. It's stored in vast quantities and has to run through the pipes underground and such. And so they've got to put a bunch of chemicals in it uh, to keep it from uh, becoming a uh, cesspool. Right, exactly. Uh, to kill the contaminants and bacteria right. that could be doing you uh, great harm. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's tap water. Mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll get more into that later. Okay. But tap water basically has chlorine in it. And it's gone through a, fil a sand filtration system and okay. gravity filtration system. Uh, uh, your fil filtered water is water that uh, generally has charcoal in it and maybe some other components to mm -hmm. it. But basically put or basically shared, it's, ch it's generally charcoal with some other ingredient, okay. some filtering process. What that does, it basically uh, uh, eliminates odor and enhances taste. The reason it enhances taste is because it removes the chlorine that is put in your water. Okay. So out of, let's just say, 100 contaminants, you're basically sequestering maybe 2 or 3 percent. So uh, so charcoal, is, uh, filtered water is good for you, but there's one issue with that, and that it basically um, sweetens your poison. Okay. In other words, you've got 97 other contaminants. That are still in there. That are still in there, but you're fooled because it tastes better. And it smells better, and it looks better, probably. Uh, now, the third question was in reference to, and I forgot what it was. Well, the, distilled. The, distilled water. Distilled water. Well, uh, filtration systems, again, they uh, there's a lot of contaminants that get through it, uh, bacteria that still get through it, and other uh, drugs and, and uh, pesticides and insecticides that will get through that filter, the mm -hmm. other 97 things that it didn't touch. Uh, so distilled water is basically an elimination system. So it eliminates all those uh, contaminants that are in your water, everything that's in that water. So uh, that, that's a big difference. To put it another way, let me throw in reverse osmosis water. Too, okay. Because we skipped over that. Okay. So I'm going to- I just lumped that into charcoal filter water. I thought it was the same thing. No, no, it's not at all. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so I'm going to- Back up to filters, I'm going to simplify everything at this point in time. It's the best way from, uh, to do it. for me to do it uh, with the time constraints that we have. Uh, charcoal filtered water, 
or filtered water sweetens your poison. I think I already went That's over like that. That's like bread. Yeah, okay. yeah, it sweetens your poison. It's got to taste a lot better, smell a lot better, get rid of the stink in your water. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, people think they're doing themselves so good. So, when they... and, and I was one of them. Yeah, right, I, right. Well, we don't know, we don't yeah, know. Yeah, right? I started yeah. off that way. Yeah. So I'm not, uh, it's good that anybody. you're doing that. Right. You're doing right. one more Better thing. Than right. Right. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Then I went to RO water because I said, God, man, there's 97 other problems I've got in the water. So I'm going to go to RO water, which is a permeable membrane, which under pressure allows more H2O to go through and less total dissolved solids okay. or contaminants. Right. But bottom line, it's a reduction system. Right. So in other words, instead of, let's just say, going back to these 100 bullets you could be hit by, now maybe you're only hit by 30 or 60, depending on the quality okay. of the of RO the system. system that you're buying. So I thought, oh my gosh, I don't want to be hit by 97, which is filtered. I don't want to be hit by 30 or 40 poison bullets at all. I want to hit, be hit by zero. I want my body to be perfectly contaminant free. So I went to distilled. So distilled water eliminates all those problems that you have in your water. So you can drink water that basically uh, had poison in it, uh, had fluoride in it, had uh, toxins, had petroleum products in it, had whatever problems. In fact, distillation even gets rid of uh, some radioactive uh, components. So it is Without a distillation system, you really don't have the heart of a highly purified system. And someone would ask, well, why why go there? Mm -hmm. Why why do you need that? Right. Well, that's a good question. So what about well water? Well water is, a lot of people love a well water. Oh, and they think that yeah. the deeper you dig the well, the, the colder the and the Cold, better crisp. it's going to be. Right. But, but you know, gravity is constant. And uh, these poisons that used to poison our bald eagles and not allow them to have nice, strong eggs that are on the surface, mm -hmm. the insecticides, the poisons, the drugs that are now in our water, in our society, uh, it all Filters goes down. down. So it doesn't just go out into space and say, oh, the eagles are fine now. Well, whatever the eagles were taken in or whatever frogs uh, were deformed, whatever did that, now has worked its way down to the deepest wells. Mm. So it is still there. So well is no guarantee that your water is any better than anybody else's water. In fact, uh, a one it's just not a puddle underneath your home. It's connected to a lot of other wells. Sure. So somewhere upstream, that well could have been exposed or totally contaminated. But because there's no irrigation, no farming, no industry, nothing like that around your home, doesn't mean you're safe at all it, because it's a stream. It's a underwater uh, conduit, a, a well is. Underground. So, yeah. But one of the things that most people, and that, that's just talking about the contaminants in the water, uh, the poison toxins, but there's something that we all kind of accept in our water, and that's, oh, it's, it's it comes from an aquifer. Therefore, there's a lot of mineral content oh, mm -hmm. yeah, in please. that water. And for some reason... A lot of people get real excited about the minerals in the <laughs> I water. was going to ask you about that because I've heard, and you can address this now, I've had people say, don't drink distilled water, it's dead water, because it's all it is is water, all the minerals have been taken out of it. Like that's, like that's somehow good to have the minerals in the water. I'm so glad you asked that question because <laughs> it is a common misconception of people. But let me explain it in a real simple way. We can only digest organic matter, not inorganic matter. Right. right. Okay. Right. Now there's a difference between an iron bar or iron powder mm -hmm. that you mix up in its finest dust form and put it in water and drink that. You get rusty water. You get rusty water. You get rusty arteries. You get rusty veins. You get rusty eyes. It is not digestible, but it is iron, isn't it? Uh -huh. right. Now, we need a plant or even another animal to possibly transform that. And that's an organic. It's a living form. So now it gets that rust or iron and transforms the whole configuration of it in the form of, let's just say, spinach, since we're okay. talking about uh, iron. Okay. And now that plant has transformed that into something that our body plant. can digest. So now... Yes, we need iron, and yes, we need calcium, but iron from spinach, 
calcium from milk, not calcium from dirt. Calcium from dirt is CaCO3. It's a form of, uh, of limestone or cement. So you do not need, your body cannot, and I ask anyone right now saying, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I want you to call me up, 612-701-7820, and tell me why you think you're right. And after a conversation, I think you'll find out that I'm absolutely right. You know why? Because it's chemistry 101. Any one of us should be able to understand this. And and people try to make it a lot more difficult and mm -hmm. try to say fortified. Yes, the cereal has fortified iron in it. Well, fortified, it's not from the food. They grinded some iron dust, put it in there. <laughs> and now it's a whole lot heavier. And now you're chewing on an iron bar. And you know what? That causes hardening, hardening of the arteries with calcium, carbonate, and iron, kidney stones, gallstones. Doctors say, don't, I've heard doctors say this before, and after I talk to them, they say, oh, yeah, I think I was wrong on that. <laughs> uh, but they tell people not, to, don't drink milk because you're going to, uh, that's calcium. It's going to build up as kidney stones right. in your body. And, and you don't want kidney stones. It's not good for you. Well, let me tell you something. Our body cannot transform milk into rocks. Right. Where do the rocks come from? Do they come from that uh, from uh, spinach? No. Did they come from? Were they transported to you by water? Yes. So, those people who have kidney stones, gallstones, heart stones, and a lot of them are farmers, by the way. Right. Mm -hmm. Drinking well water. They've been drinking well water, and their body is turning into stone, and. Crazy. That forms heart, it gives heart attacks, hardening of the arteries, and a lot of other things. So what we are looking at is something that's very positive. People buy mineral water. It has over 500 TDSs, you know, and yep. that's damaging to you. We'll be right back after these messages. Mineral Frank water. Mendez is with us here. He's one of the most national or most recognized national experts on water. We're blessed to have him in the studio. We're talking water here on Our Healthy Homes, <laughs> ourhealthyhomes.com. We'll be right back after the messages. Okay, so now, uh, as just, we, for, the people, as uh, just for the people on Go Facebook ahead. here, we've got, we have a, a reverse osmosis little deal sitting on the counter. And so many people have a whole house reverse osmosis uh, deal System. because their, their thought is that I don't want to shower with, with water. Right, that, open that, up my pores. Open up my pores and all that stuff with, with chlorine. Right. With chlorine. Right. Mm -hmm. So they so they do the reverse osmosis, but they but it's what I'm hearing is that they for cooking and for and for internal consumption, you really should be using distilled water. Yes, and uh, again, not not to take away if you have an RO system, use it. You've done a great thing for yourself because you've reduced the amount of reduced. Yes, reduced. It's a reduction system, not an elimination system. There's some things that it absolutely does not reduce, by the way. A lot of them don't touch fluoride, and there's a lot of other things they don't touch. But overall, I get excited when someone's improved their water quality, and I congratulate them, whether it's filtered water, RO water, or distilled. We sell all those things. We're speaking with Frank Mendez, a national expert on water, and we're talking about water. I you know, I don't like water. I drink coffee. And I love water. So if I drink coffee, Sheila, are you listening to me? I'm listening. Look at me in my eyes I when gotcha. I say this. If I drink coffee made with distilled water, boom, right? Boom. Give it's, me a high five. It's, there it, you go. It, your coffee will taste better. Let me, since you're on that subject. Yes, the coffee me, will taste better. Yeah, let me give you one little experiment I had once uh, in the hospitality uh sector. Okay. I, I was in a hospitality show and there's people selling a particular brand of great coffee. Okay. Okay. And I challenge and I challenge them. I, I, I came on over and asked them, you think you really know your coffee? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I like to challenge people. I like them to challenge me. Right. Okay. Uh, so I had them over and I had three I had three different types of coffee there for them. And I said, tell me which is the after you know I said right. aside, tell me which is the best coffee. Uh, oh no. I said tell me which is the worst coffee. Okay. And, and, and for simplicity's sake, I'm going to say uh, number three. Okay. Okay. That was the worst coffee, they said, by far. And I go, that was your coffee. That was, they're all the same. And I said, by the way, I'm picking all of them the same flavors. Mm -hmm. Right, okay? right, right. Same yeah, flavors. like apples to apples. Apples yeah, to apples. Right. And they looked at me stunned. They said, no. Uh-uh, <laughs> we, we know our coffee. And, uh, and then I said, 
pick the second best coffee that you liked. And, and they said this one. Okay, which is the best one? This one over here uh, on the right. And I said, you know what? All three of them are your own coffee, right. same flavor, same brand. But you notice the difference in your own coffee and one, one, one tasted bad. And they go, well, how, why is that? They were confused because it's all their coffee. Sure. They didn't know their sure. coffee, right? Right, right. So I said, because the, the water that you thought was the worst, I took from the tap back over there at the bathroom. That's the same water that you drink out of the tap. Right. Right. right? It's the same water, by the way, that flushes your toilet. Right. right. So, I mean, how, how high quality can that be? But right. we all knew that people would drink out of tap water. Right. right. That, they're drinking toilet water. Right. right. So, anyway, so I said, that came from the toilet. I mean, from the faucet. Right. <laughs> I will say that Sheila does not drink toilet water because it gets her hair wet. <laughs> and, and the second one, I said, I said that came from a fil filtered water. So that was through a charcoal filtration system. Okay. The one that was the best was distilled water. So what am I saying? Your coffee, if you drink, if you use distilled water, anything you're going to be mixing food with. Uh, when I go into restaurants, I make sure it's at least charcoal filtered water, at the very least, because I can taste the chlorine in the water, and I know there's a lot of other contaminants. So I can taste. I can too. Taste. Yeah, taste bad I can water, I can and I can taste yeah. it in coffee or anything else they mix. And if it's in their water, it's probably in their food. Right. So right. Tell me about uh, the the practicality of it, of having, a, like, a, you go to the store and you get bottled water. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we bring home big, we have a gathering at the house, we're going to have bottles of water. Mm -hmm. What is that water? Well, you don't really know. There's no real guarantee of what it is. Exactly. Okay. There, there really isn't. However, I find that they're, they're, since businesses are very competitive, they test each other out. They do have a way of monitoring each other, but not all the time. And if there's a whole crack in the wall, some people, some businesses go through it, even though it's going to be sealed. So you really don't know for sure. But when you when you read it, though, I feel fairly comfortable. But I test those waters on occasion, by the way. Sure. Fairly comfortable that it is what it says. Uh, it, it is. And um, which uh, sometimes they say it's spring water. Sometimes they say it's quote unquote purified water. I don't even know what that means. Well well that's that's one of those magic words. <laughs> yeah. That's one of those uh, it can mean whatever you want it to be. I can put a sock over uh, a gutter and throw somebody water and say that's water's been purified. Mm -hmm. Sure. So that's one of those system, slippery right, words. Right, slippery slope there. Yeah, yeah that, that that are on out there. So uh, so anyways it's it's when I see people drinking these types of waters and at the grocery store, buying them. Uh, there's several different things with it. Again, going back to mineral water, that has over 500 TDSs. That's another. What's a TDS? Total dissolved solid. Okay. That's an unknown. All right. You don't really know what it is. So. Uh, but Sounds bad. TDS. So like like uh, Perrier <laughs> and some of those mineral waters that are supposed to, you know, they were trendy back in the late 80s. You know that. Have uh, Perrier well, and some of these, uh, you know, French mineral waters. Good tasting well water. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Good tasting well water. That's okay, but it has the same things that I said earlier before. Okay. It has over 500 TDSs. The United States government, when it looks at total dissolved solids, says that uh, you know they have limits on everything, mm -hmm. all sorts of contaminants. Uh, by the way, and when it gets to 500, they say uh, no matter how friendly that dirt is, it's, it's bad dirt. for you. Yeah. You've got too much dirt, and a lot of your spring water is way over 500 TDSs. The higher the TDSs, the more dirt or minerals that some people call that are not usable by your body are being put into your body. Do you test water? For yes, people. I, uh, I, I we have testers for it, but when we want when uh, but I, I, I tell you something that that I've learned a long time ago. If you're if you have a, if you're drinking distilled water, you never really have to test it, mm -hmm. the water because it's going to purify it. There might be a tester that you have for your distiller, but you don't have to hire someone to pay all these thousands of dollars to test your water uh, as it's coming out of the ground. Okay, so about, now I finally gotten Keith to believe that I need to have good water because I drink so much of it, right? Right. And and now you know showering, right? You shower and it opens up your pores, and then that you know water's just going going in there. What do you do for people? Like, what's the system? What's yeah? The, that's what I was gonna, what's the practicality of it? I mean, how how, 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 how much I energy does it take better. 
to distill water? Is it a high energy use uh, operation? Is it, it what about the quantity? Could you do it at your home? Yeah. And then what about the quantities that you're able to distill uh, to be practical? And then and then thirdly, is there a difference between distilling in the home or buying a jug of distilled water from the grocery store like we used to buy for the for the steam iron? Oh, great. Uh, well, in reference to uh, the practicality of it, uh, the higher, this is what everyone should know. It's not as simple as you think to bring it to your home. The people who are very successful in bringing it to their home, to their showers and other people, are people who are building a new home and want it to begin with because mm -hmm. it has to have a different delivery system. You cannot use copper. You should not use copper. You could use stainless steel, but that'd be way too right. expensive. So PEX. So PEX, you got it. Mm -hmm. So PEX standard are, are the best because they give very little, if any, of itself to the water. The higher the purity of the water, and this is where I want to take people back to, oh, the government's going to take care of me. Oh, the city's doing right. the thing with the water. They're no. improving it. Uh, well, you know, let me tell you something. The more they really improve it, the more contaminants that have been laying in those pipes for years and in your old pipes are going to be scrubbed out and delivered to your belly because it cleans them on out. So you don't, you have to have PEX type of delivery system or otherwise the, the since it's a great, since it's a great detoxifier and cleaner, mm -hmm. it'll actually scrub the copper. Sure it will. It'll take it to you. Mm -hmm. And this is, and you don't want that copper taken to you. So, so it used to be that copper was the gold standard. Mm -hmm. You know, we went from iron pipes and you know uh, metal pipes, and and that and if you had copper pipes, I mean copper was the, which was was the preferred one that you wanted to exactly. have. So now you're telling me that these copper pipes, which are so expensive that people paid extra for in many cases to have in their house, are not as good as the plastic pipes what about well, the leaching of the plastic let, let me let me quantify that word plastic because it's such a generic right, right. There, it is so such a science there's so much science behind that word plastic okay there's so many the levels, different levels le of plastic like you have an RO system different grades just like there's different grades of cattle meat sure anything there's just different levels of it so the PEX uh, the the uh, PEX type of lines. Right, made right in Apple Valley, Minnesota, by the way. Great. I'm glad we have some businesses here in yeah. Apple right. Valley. It is so great because it's really forgiving. A copper pipe, let's just say, will burst. PEX lines will expand and contract. Right. Copper will be scrubbed to you. And if you have too much copper, I mean, it it can dull your dull your senses, dull your brains. With with the quiet over there. With the PEX lines, <laughs> again, it's the highest quality of delivery system that you're going to have. It's made to withstand heat, cold, and give very little of itself to the to your water. Now there is a point that you're making, because we, so it is the highest level that you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that it cannot possibly contaminate you in any way? No, yeah. it there does isn't. not. It means that that's the best you're going to get. Right. So you know, until we get to heaven, there's not going to be anything better. Right. Than that here that we know of. Right. I have so, a question. Go ahead. So I had a heavy metals test done, and my lead is three to three and a half times more than it should be in my body. Oh. And so, am I getting lead from 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 my tap water? You could very well be getting lead from your tap water and other things that may be surrounding you, because it can be in the air as well, and it can be in the soil. So I would say, on a blind bet, on a blind bet yep. without seeing anything, I'd yep. say, yeah, if I had to say something, it's probably from your water. And it may not be from the water that you have now, but see lead and all these hard minerals, like I said, that people think are good for you, yeah. they build up in your body. Right. My father was a printer. He lived, World War II veteran. He just passed away a couple of years ago. When he was 52 years old, he had cancer. They removed it. He was a printer. So all the lead back then, it was, oh, they, they sure. did it by hand. Sure. But you know what? No one said, no one said lead is bad for you. They didn't even know that lead was bad in your water. Right. I mean, in your gas. They didn't, they knew, I believe. Contact solution I in the 80s. I, I mean, the just, the right. list just goes on and on and I, on. And I on. believe they knew it, but they didn't want to disclose it. I'm with it. you. My I'm dad's insurance you. policy was as high as the highest uh, 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 skyscraper builders yep. in the United States. And they told me it's because of stress. No, it's because he was breathing and drinking. Mm -hmm. He was breathing and swallowing lead. I hate it to visit my dad at work because I could taste lead 
in my mouth when I left. Wow. The good part of the story is he lived to be 92 years old. He drank distilled water the last 30, the last 25 nice. years of his life. There you go. So, That's the website you want to go to waterdistillers.com that's where you want to go to find frank mendez waterdistillers.com or give him a call 612-701-7820 612-701-7820 you're going to find out all about water when you call that number we'll be right back okay so we talked about the differences between the water uh water water, water attempts at treatment right so you got filtered water or something you're going to i'm going to have well water because i like that deep well probably not the best thing that we find out now that is probably just as contaminated as, as anything else. Filtered water, okay, that's that's a, a shot at it at least. It maybe it's going to taste a little bit better and look a little bit better, but not really that much better. Yes. Then we got reverse osmosis water where we're moving in the right direction. Reduction system. And, uh, and a reduction system. And it might be great for a whole house system where you're showering and, and doing all that kinds of stuff. And then we got distilled water, which to me what I'm hearing is – that's your drinking water. That's the water you cook with. That's the water you drink. Maybe, maybe, uh, um, well, for we sure. Make the water our cleaning you chemicals. We make, make your cleaning, cleaning supplies with and, yeah, and all of that. Sources. Let's talk about the equipment. Can we talk just about equipment a little bit? Sure. I'd like to backtrack a little bit. Okay. In reference to the RO systems, uh, generally, you have to have this planned in the new home. However, no matter what type of system you want, and I really encourage anyone just improve your water. I don't, right. Wherever you go is your is is your interest. It's what you desire, but improve it. Uh, but it, it uh, when when you have your water systems, you need to make sure that you at least get it to your refrigerator, to your uh, kitchen sink, right. and possibly maybe to a, a bathroom uh, in one of the uh, bedroom areas. Okay. Uh, as well, because people get up and they just drink the tap. Kids do. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking oh, of kids. Sure. They'll do that. They don't really. If you if they've had enough right. distilled water, they'll then only drink distilled water. But at first, they'll drink whatever water. Christmas distilled right. water. Everybody. So it's interesting. No, we're not. So it's, <laughs> yes, we no, are. We're not. So it's interesting. You get the. Uh, um, you don't want to hook so up excited. the system so you're watering the grass with it unless you've got. Uh, uh, unlimited resources. Right. There's there are more efficient ways to do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are different. So you don't really. Some people and I do at times shower maybe once uh, several times a year if, if I went gone through a, a factory or a housing a house is being built and I'm allergic to some of the stuff that they're using because I'm really allergic skin. Uh, I'm allergic to, my, to a lot of different contaminants. I can't walk through the aisle in a grocery store without my skin burning and I'll, me start coughing. So I'm ultra sensitive. To Cannot go down things. that cleaning, no. that cleaning aisle. Uh -uh. Oh, no way. Stay no, far I, away from I, I hold my breath and if I find myself one, I walk through as <laughs> fast as I can again. and hold my breath and hopefully I can make it to the other end before I have to breathe. And that's only going to happen with people younger and younger. Uh, right? I mean, they're, they're so toxic, they're just going to get overloaded early. You, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because they're more, uh, every year our environment gets more and more toxic. Yeah. And insane. more and more different things are introduced for us to use as consumers. Mm -hmm. So all those things have the capability of introducing other toxins to us. And uh, anyway. So, the, the, so get back to the equipment geez. then. So what's an efficient way? I mean, there's desk, there, I call them desktops. So there's countertop <laughs> models. And then there's bigger machines and, and all that stuff. I mean, if I we're, we live in a house, it's it's uh, you know almost twenty years old, copper pipes. What would what would a recommendation be for a home like that? Well, to take a look, you need to have someone that knows about distilled water to begin with, so they can see if there's a conduit or a way to deliver. All right. And once they figure out the best way to deliver, then you figure out the system that now fits that spot that you have. Uh, some people there. And different. do you do that? Yes, we do that as, okay. as well too. So you'd have water coming in. I'm just thinking now. So we have copper, to plan copper, it in we have copper pipes all all throughout the house. You're saying, don't be running distilled water through copper pipes, or please. even RO water through or, copper or pipes, or even RO water through copper pipes. Filtered water, not so. So won't, okay. the, won't they eventually clean out those pipes? Yeah, and you'll be the one that's consuming that water. You'll be the filter <laughs> for it. Okay. It's, it's either get a filter. Can't you just turn around and let the water run for a while? Yeah, no, no. it's going to come out. If it, tr take a look at this. If any of you have a jacuzzi bathtub, uh -huh. don't use it for a couple of months. Oh, and, yeah. and then turn it on. And what's all that orange stuff, stuff coming out? out? Right. See, uh -huh. that's what's in you. And that's what you're consuming. Okay. And and who knows what it is? Uh, uh, 
you know, who knows what it is. Okay. So so you gotta you gotta figure a place where you can put it, and either you're gonna just you either going to distill it and put it in a jug and put it in the refrigerator, or if you're fortunate enough to be able to, you can set up a system where you can distill it and run some lines deliver it to a deliver to, it to, to a, a, to a location. location that's mm -hmm. that's convenient. Yeah, we do that for a lot of uh, uh, medical supply places, pharmaceuticals, other places that want that water. Uh, to be at its highest purity level and then deliver it to a different uh, station. Oh, okay, so we have a so you have a distilled machine, right? A right. distilling machine. So they they come in different sizes. Yeah, we, I assume. Yeah, what's really interesting, probably the most important thing I can say to you is, if you're interested in a water distiller, and I hope at some time you are, and once you do, you'll it'll be one of the happiest days in your life when you've been consuming it. But the uh, the distillers, you you have to make sure you know that it's going to fit. You have to decide uh, whether you're going to want it transported to a different location or not. You can use it downstairs. For example, when I first got my first distiller, I, I couldn't afford the, the remote pump. I couldn't afford a, a couple of the options I wanted. So, of course, we went downstairs and filled up the jugs with mm -hmm. water, then took them upstairs. Uh, that's great. Uh, you can use that system any anywhere. And uh, there's different prices on them. But this is the, what I was really going to say. The most important thing uh, I need to say now, because it's really the most important thing I have to say, is oh, if you're interested in a water stiller, make sure it's made in the U.S. Oh, okay. yes, please. because or, or if... <laughs> There's only two places, that, and we sell them in China, Taiwan. Right. We sell them all over the world. Why they buy the USA ones? Because everything is superior in reference to stainless steel, the technology, the durability, the stainless steel distillers that are made in the United States, you'll be able to give them to your grandkids if you okay. just take care of them a little bit. Right. So made in the USA is the most important thing that you can know. We carry every single major made in USA model and Canadian model whose manufacturing uh, plant has been around for over 25 years. So everything we carry is absolutely the best. The question is, why do you carry all those? That's another question, mm -hmm. which you may want an answer to or not. But uh, I can answer that at a later it's point. It's price points. And exactly. It's yeah. price point. It's configuration. Right. It's what someone in your family previous had, familiar, yeah. familiarity. Yeah. It's all those. There's warm, fuzzy things to that right. as well. Yes. Okay, so now we use uh, distilled water. They use it in hospitals, you know, and there's, there's still water. Everything's using they? De detoxifying <laughs> and, and uh, in testing because they want to start with a clear H2O, right? Yes. Clear baseline. You know that some people are into now they want to drink uh, alkaline water. Right. How, what is the pH of distilled water and what is the difference between distilled water and alkaline water? And is there any truth to that? That's that's a great question. And I, I really like people who are looking into things like different entities, uh, maybe like pH and maybe mm -hmm. what they can do about their pH because they're on the right journey. Right, they pH may is not, huge. You know, they, and, and, and inevitably, they'll hit the truth. They'll get to the target, they'll hit the bullseye. Mm -hmm. But we all kind of take different roads to get there yes. and have different beliefs in getting there. So um, now going to pH, to answer your question, the pH of distilled water is generally just below 7.0. Okay. It's just slightly acidic. Okay, now some people say, ooh, no, it's not. It's not three or four or two, but it's slightly acidic. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it can go. It can range from as low as six to about six, eight, seven, but generally not seven. So okay. some people want to eliminate all that in their system, and they do it by adding alkalinity to it. And alkalinity is something that um, I tell people: okay, if it's working for you, test your body intelligence totally understand and feel what it's doing for you because it may be good for you and maybe not someone else okay. but because it's not good for someone else doesn't mean it's not good for you sure so we're all and, and, that, and, all that's, and that's a great example because he usually always has an alkaline body right no matter what he does no matter what he eats right and and for me i i can't eat all what yes. he eats because right. I'm, my body is just generally more acidic. So you have to listen to that mm -hmm. about, and know that about yourself. And acidic yourself. is a Does that problem. come out in and your personality too? <laughs> <laughs> One quick thing to that mm -hmm. is uh, there's a lot of confusion with it. What is it supposed to be in slightly acidic? Let me share one thing with you. Uh, the uh, the uh, pH in your stomach is two. Yeah. So, and, and I don't know of anyone right now that has been able to explain 
the, the cycle that it goes to as it changes the pH throughout your entire body. If you know of someone out there that I can read and really understand, uh, understand it, because no one has written anything that I've read that makes it understandable. Because, okay, it's two, it's four, now you want to make it... It goes through your stomach, it becomes two. How does it, get, how yeah, does it change? Yeah, it? now you want to make it more al alkaline, right. so the two is not going to work. Because right. you're more gotcha. alkaline. So there's all these different things. Frank gotcha. Mendez, ladies and gentlemen. Frank Mendez... Nationally back, renowned I think there's more to talk about on water. <laughs> Waterdistillers.com. Waterdistillers.com. 612-701-7820. 612-701-7820. We'll see you next week.